Oh, so what are we learning about today? 37? How do you say this word? Haggai. Can you guys say that together? You ready? Haggai. Haggai and book number 38. Zechariah. Zechariah. Four syllables. Let's say it again. Zechariah. What about this one? Haggai. Haggai. Zechariah. So after book number 37 and 38, who knows how many books in the Old Testament? No, not two. It has to be more than two. How many? No. One more. 39. Which hand up? 39. 39. That's right. So we've got one more. And we'll be looking at that one next week. But today we're looking at Haggai and Zechariah. Now, who was Haggai and Zechariah? Haggai and Zechariah were two preachers or prophets in the Old Testament. They were preaching when the Jews came back to rebuild the temple. So when they were rebuilding the temple in the days of Ezra and Nehemiah, do you remember those names? Ezra and Nehemiah, Ezra the scribe, and Nehemiah was one of the servants of the king. They went back with the Jews to build the temple, and Haggai and Zechariah were there with them, preaching to the people, trying to encourage them to keep at the work of the Lord. One of the problems was that when they went back to start building the wall, they got comfortable, didn't they? What does that mean? They took it easy. They got too comfortable. And they left off building the house of the Lord. They left off building the temple of the Lord and went and built their own thing. Sometimes we do that. You know, we're meant to be busy. We're meant to be busy serving the Lord. But sometimes... We go about our own things, right? Maybe sometimes sport takes priority. Sometimes your life takes priority, work, things like that, school. But God's house should always take priority. That's why we always make sure we're at church. But the people, the God's people, Noah, no, they left off building the house of the Lord. And this is where Haggai had to remind them, hey, you build your own houses, but you have to make sure you build the house of the Lord. So this was Haggai here. See, he's looking at the house of the Lord that's only half built, half finished. Some of it's been broken down. They have to repair it. And look at what he says to the people. Haggai 1, chapter 1, 4, verse 5. He says, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lie waste. What is he saying? Is it time now for you to be, what's a sealed house? A sealed house, like think of a ceiling. So he's saying, hey, is it time for you? Your house is finished. Your house has a roof over it. But God's house, this house, lie waste. What does it mean, waste? It's all broken down. needs to be repaired. There's no roof on it. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. What does that mean? It means to think about what you're doing. Sometimes you need to stop and think. And think, am I doing what God wants me to do? Or am I doing the wrong thing? Sometimes in your life you have to think, oh, I'm about to do this thing. Should I be doing it? You've got to consider your ways, right? You've got to think about what you do. Before you do it, make sure you're doing the right thing. And this encouraged the people to build the house of the Lord. And, you know, when they work together, things can, great things can happen when you work together. Teamwork. Yeah, so when we do our games as well, you need to think of how you work as a team. And what happens if somebody in your team is not doing their job? What happens? You lose, right? So you as a team member, you need to understand you can affect everyone else in your team. It's like that in church as well. It's like that in Christianity. Your example is going to affect the work of God, isn't it? But when they all work together, wow, amazing things can happen. Just like in a team, you work together, what happens? You can win, can't you? You can win. The same in Christianity. You can get great things done if you work together. Now, Zechariah was the same. 
This is a picture of somebody drew of Zechariah. We don't know if that's what he looks like, but that's how they've drawn him. He was the same. So he was preaching, encouraging them to build the house of the Lord, encouraging them to do things. Yes, Simon? What are those two sticks I'm not too sure. I think they're using that to build the house. But Zechariah also, he was preaching, encouraging them to build the house of the Lord, but his book was more about Jesus' second coming. Now, because we're getting to the end of the Old Testament, they're starting to preach, now it's starting to line up with end times prophecy when Jesus Christ returns. So we read a lot in Zechariah of Jesus' second coming as well as his first coming. And this is why people sometimes were mixing it up. Look at what he says here in Zechariah 2, verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. Right? What's the daughter of Zion? That's God's people, right? Judah. For lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. See, God is going to live among us. And he did, didn't he? Let's read this together. You ready? Feet off the chair. Let's sit properly. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 10. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For lo, I come and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 10. 10. So Zechariah was preaching about the coming of Jesus. So Jesus not only came once, and this is where people were getting mixed up because they're reading passages about Jesus' coming and they didn't realize that he was going to come twice. He was going to come once to suffer and die for our sins. Thank God for that, right? And when we believe on Jesus, we can be saved from our sins. But Zechariah also described the second time he's coming. And when Jesus comes the second time, he hasn't come yet, he's going to come back on a white horse. He's going to come with glory and power. And his saints are going to come with him to rule and reign. And we're going to be amongst them if we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right? So you see how the minor prophets, even Haggai and Zechariah, even though they're preaching about building the house of the Lord, they're always pointing us back to Jesus. And that's what we always have to do. We have to consider our ways, make sure we're always doing the work of the Lord. Okay, let's play some games. We're going to think about our teamwork, aren't we? We work together. That's when we can make the dream work. You ever heard of that? Teamwork makes the dream work. All right, let's stand up. We'll go to the back of the room.